We'll be in Proverbs chapter 4. We've been there in this whole series. That's kind of where we're, we're rooted at. If you want to open up to Philippians 4, Proverbs 4, you choose. We'll be in both of those areas. Or if you have your hand out, that'll get you through too. That's, that's going to be everything you need this morning. So Lord, we just ask for your presence this morning as we, as we dig into your word. I ask for open ears and open hearts to receive which you've got for each one of us this morning. Lord, we know that uh, through a, a teaching time, through a sermon, you can speak 15 different words to 15 different people, Lord. And it, it might not be even the words that came out of my mouth, but it's the words that you spoke to each heart. And Lord, we're thankful for that. We're thankful that, that you've got this in control. You've got plans for your church, plans to prosper, plans to grow us, plans to use us in a mighty, mighty way. I just ask to give this, this church a heart for the world. Our, our mission for this church doesn't stop in these four walls. It goes. It goes out beyond our county or our community and in the world for the, for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Guard Your Heart. We're finishing the Guard Your Heart series this week. This is just a short three week series. And next week, we're starting our Christmas season uh, with, a, with a, a, a series called Keeping Christmas Well. And it's funny because this morning, Randy said something about keeping Christmas, keeping it what it's supposed to be. It's not about. Right? It's not about all the stuff. Never has been. Never, never should have been. Never will be. So I'm excited about that series. We're going to be digging into that next week. And this week we're finishing the Guard Your Heart series. And Guard Your Heart comes out of where? Proverbs 4. Remember, we've, we've talked about this. This is kind of a root of the message. Proverbs 4, verse 23. It says, guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart because the direction of your life is determined by it. The course of your life is determined by your heart. Your heart's bad, your heart's broke, your heart's bad, your heart's sick. Your life's going to be broken, messed up, and sick. You're going to be struggling. And we're going to struggle enough anyways. We don't need to add to our struggle by having our heart in a bad place, right? A healthy heart helps us stay close to Jesus. So remember last week, we talked about Peter. And he's, Peter said this. He says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little, where I can do everything through Christ. It gives me strength. So we talked about the everything last week. The full stomach, the, the blessing, the, the, the seasons of abundance. We talked about that last week and how, how we can live in seasons of abundance and still be drawn away from God, right? Seasons of abundance have a tendency to make us arrogant, make us prideful, make us think we've got this under control because <coughs> look at what I've done. And that's the, the danger that we have to be aware of. That's how we got to keep our heart. This week, we're going to go the other way. We're going to talk about scenes of lack. Empty stomachs. Living on a little. Having, having just enough to get by and sometimes even less than that. That's, those seasons are, are where, man, the enemy loves to meet us, isn't it? He loves to meet us in our season of, of, of lack. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Guarding your hearts in seasons of lack. So these seasons, these times in our life where, where we, we're struggling, where, where, where we're lack, we, we just are coming up a little short. You know, how many can relate to the, the bank account and the bills aren't really lining up this month? A pile of bills here in the bank account too. We're having a season of lack. What about seasons where, we're not just full by, by myself everywhere I go. I don't have anybody that's picking up what I'm putting down. You know, I, I don't know if we can relate with that. Seasons of lack. In different ways. But they, they, seasons of lack have a way of, of making us feel desperate. Right? Desperation. Desperation usually comes out in one of two ways in our life. We either get desperate for God, where we get this, this fire in our heart. I'm going to go chase down God. I'm going to seek God in prayer. I'm going to spend time in my word. I'm going to talk to people about Jesus. I'm going to go, I'm going to call the pastor and talk to him. I'm going to, I'm going to buckle down in my faith life and Fan this flame, and I'm going to get on fire for God because I need it right now. I'm desperate. That's that's good. That's what we want hard times to do. That's what God likes to see happen through difficulties in our life. But unfortunately, that's not always how it goes, is it? Desperation sometimes comes out we're desperate for anything. We're willing to grab onto whatever it is that the world throws in front of us. You know, when we're, when we're struggling, a lot of times we'll grab onto something that's that's not good for us. And we know it. We know it's not good for us, but but I'd rather have something than nothing. I'd rather have enough of this, even if it's a wrong thing, even if 
give it to bad things. I'd rather have that than nothing. And, and, and the enemy likes to fool us in that, doesn't he? He likes to trick us into that. Man, how many of us have seen a friend or maybe we've experienced, we've backslidden in times of lack just because we were so desperate for something? Desperate for God is good. Desperate for anything, that's not a good place to be. So we can feel like, like we're in a season of lack. And I mentioned earlier, I got a little ahead of myself. But we can feel like a season of lack is happening, you know, if, it, if it's a financial thing, if it's just the bills, the, the money, the, the everything's just piling up. And, and this is a hard time of, of life for, for young families and families in general, because We've lived, we've got to have the money to do this, we've got to have the money to do that, we want to buy this, we want to buy this. It's a tough time, and let's own it. Like, this is a difficult season for a lot of families. We feel pressure to buy things and to have stuff and to do this and do that and make it magical for the kids. Those aren't bad things, but, but it just can put us in a place where, where we're in a season of lack. You know, sometimes a season of lack can be short on hope. Like, I just don't have hope. Like, I, I just feel. Pretty crazy right now. I don't have hope. I don't know what tomorrow brings. Every, every day seems gray around here. That's pretty common for our, our region, isn't it? I just don't have any hope right now. I feel, again, it's this season, too, where I just don't have enough hope. I, I'm lacking in, in my hope. What about peace? We, we have seasons of, of lack of peace where everything feels like a fight. Everything's a battle. And you're a little ouchy where, where people say stuff to you and I take an offense. Like that, that can be a season of lack. There's a lack of people around you that can understand. You know, we, we, I just talked about that a little bit. Lack of, lack of a person. Lack, or you feel like your person isn't, isn't, isn't hearing you. Lack of love. Lack of, right now, lack of sun. Like that can really negatively affect us. Sometimes we're in a season of lack of happiness. We're just, we're just upset all the time. We're sad. We're bummed out. You know, that happens. These seasons can come at us in lots of different ways. We can feel lack in lots of different areas. I'll all that to say this. Lack can happen anywhere. In any season, in anything in our hearts. You know, lots of different ways we can feel lack. It doesn't have to be a eat ramen type of situation. It can be anywhere. But as these seasons happen, in whatever form they, they hit us, an unguarded heart will struggle to hold firm, to hold strong, and to seek God and wait for Him to wait for Him to move on our behalf. That's what it's about. The unguarded heart, and, and I, I hope you relate with this. Or I, maybe not hope, but I think you will. Unguarded hearts exaggerate bad times, don't they? The old mountain on the molehill thing. When we don't guard our hearts. This little hiccup in life, and all of a sudden, just ah, oh, woe is me. My life's terrible. Why? Well, I got a speeding ticket. That's the end of the world. Like, that's all? Come on. That's not a, that's nothing. Let's let's be honest. Like, we do that. Our, our hearts, if we don't guard our hearts and protect our peace, little stuff can turn into these giant disasters in our life. Unguarded hearts make us even more desperate than we would be otherwise. Even more desperate to grab onto whatever it is. You know, and this is how we end up with friends that, that aren't great friends for us. They lead us away from Jesus. They lead us into other things that we, we don't need to be part of. This is how we end up with, with uh, addiction that has already destroyed our life. But yeah, here we are going back to it because, gosh, I just need something. I need some happiness. I need some joy in my heart. You know, maybe this, even if it's just a temporary thing, maybe that's better than nothing. That's, that's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And the enemy wants us right there. We're, we're so desperate. He wants us to live in desperation. We can't bite that. We can't take that, that bait. We want comfort. And if, we're, if we don't have that, we'll, we'll pretty much do anything it takes to get it back. You know, I think about it like this. You know, <clears throat> let's say you're up in the middle of the lake and, and you're drowning. Like, I'm, I'm drowning in the middle of the lake. What happens to you? You grab onto anything you can get your hands on it to save your own. Whatever it is, I'm grabbing onto it. If it's addiction, I'll grab onto that. If it's if it's a bad friend, a bad friend who I've already left, and I'll grab onto it. If it's an ex-girlfriend who, who is destructive in our life, or an ex-boyfriend who is destructive in our life, 
But I have nothing else. I'll grab back onto those. I'll grab back onto that. Whatever it is. Instead of just being calm, tread the water like they teach you in swimming class. I don't know if anyone wants to take it. You just calm down, tread water, and wait for God to move on our behalf, right? That's how we guard our hearts. That's how we wait on the Lord to move. By just not letting a mountain become a molehill in times of, in times of struggle. When we grab onto those life-saving things that, that are really just killing us, we end up in these cycles of bad decisions. I'm more desperate to make another bad decision. I'm more desperate now because that bad decision messed me up more. I'm more desperate, so grab it something. And we have these cycles of desperation, bad decision, desperation, bad decision. They're multiplied and they are exaggerated. The more we go down that road, the worse they get. We end up hurting ourselves and others in the process. It's a tough, it's a tough road, isn't it? We've all been there. I, I, I think we've all been there. I know, I know most of us have. And this, this cycle that, that we get stuck in, this cycle of desperation, bad decisions, and best desperation, this, this can make us weak. It makes us hopeless. It takes the desperation that started and multiplies it. Just like a good seed can multiply in the ground of your heart, a bad seed can multiply the ground of your heart and, and give out tenfold, hundredfold what, what it was to start with. Everything that brought us to desperation is now multiplied and amplified as we get these, these cycles of, of, the, of desperation. When we leave our hearts unguarded, we will suffer. That's, that's the bottom line here. When we're unguarded, we will suffer. But here's the truth. And this is, this is, that's the bottom. Okay, we went all the way down to the bottom of bad news. Now we're going to work our way back up. Here's the truth. No matter how many times you've done that cycle, no matter how many times you've gone down that road of, woe is me, I got it bad, I'm, I'm the worst person ever, I, you know, I deserve whatever. No matter how many times you've gone back to the old, repented of, turned away from stuff, God is still faithful. He still wants you. He still loves you. He still loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you the same right now as you did the moment he knit you together in your mom's womb. His feelings for you have never changed. He still wants you desperately to come home and to get away from that stuff and to, and to leave it in the past. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if, you, if you've gone back ten times and grabbed onto those things that, that loves you. To death. He doesn't care. He wants us now. I can promise you this too. The enemy doesn't want us to get out of that cycle of depression, of desperation, and bad decisions. The enemy wants you right there. You're, you're easy pickings right there. You're, you're, you've got a target on it. God says, you know what? You're not. You're mine. Just tread water. Son, just tread water, daughter. Yeah, you're in, a, you're in a tough season right now. Yes, you are. Just tread water. Don't make a decision when you're at your worst. Don't make a, don't make a life-changing decision when, when things are down. Right? We don't, want to, we don't want to ever make decisions when we're desperate. They're never good. That just lets the enemy keep running us, keep running us, keep running us. And it's that cycle of despair that we, we get stuck in. You know, it, it, let's be honest, there's a lot of struggle with depression. There's a lot of struggle with anxiety. Right now, right now, struggle with it, just fight it all the time. And, and it, you know, a lot of times the enemy doesn't do it in one day. He doesn't just knock you down. It's a little bit, a little bit of peace today, a little bit of joy tomorrow, a little bit of happiness, little by little by little until we wake up one day and we just feel like, what's left? Be encouraged. That's not uncommon. That's the scheme of the enemy. Just stealing you, stealing your stuff away. Stealing your... But that's why we got to guard our hearts. Guys, that's why we've got to be on guard all the time. Little by little, little by little until we find ourselves broken down. Broken hearted and busted. And that's when we even start to believe the lies that we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. God doesn't really love us. Nobody can love us because look at how much of a disaster we are. We start to buy into those lies. We start to believe that stuff. 
know, it's interesting, Israel felt that way. The nation of Israel literally felt that way. They had, they had sinned so much. They had done so much bad. They felt like there's no way that God could love us anymore. God has turned his back on us. That's what the nation of Israel thought. But the prophet Isaiah spoke to Israel. And this, this is the warning that Isaiah gave to Israel. But, but feel free to apply this to your life if you need it right now. If you're, if you're going through some stuff right now, and you feel like you've been too far to come home, this is what Isaiah has to say. He says, oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? Oh, Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? This is the Lord. This is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depth of his understanding. He gives power to the weak, the strength of the powerless. That's us. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fail, will fall in exhaustion. Get this. But those who trust in the Lord will find their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not faint. Amen. Thank you, God. No matter what, no matter how bad life is, if we trust in the Lord, we will have new strength. We will have what we need to get through. We will have the, the manna for the day. We will have what we need to get through today. We will have the strength to tread water for the day. Not only that, we will just have enough to get through the day. It says, we'll soar on wings like eagles. We'll, we'll be infinitely more than we can think or ask if we trust in the Lord. If we trust. That's what it is. It's a matter of trust. Do you trust God to be your provider? Do you trust him to meet your needs? Do you trust him in a way that makes where I, I can't be desperate because I've got the king. The king's my dad. How desperate could I possibly be? I've got, I've got royal blood in my veins. Do you think the king's son's desperate for anything? The king's daughter? Absolutely not. Let's start living our life as, as one who knows who we are. We find new strength. How many in this room need some new strength today? Let's let's. Be honest. Who can, who can use some new strength today? Who, how many of you? Has the strength from yesterday ran out yet? Yes, it has. Absolutely has. Who needs new strength every single day? All of us. So let's start working this into our daily routine. God, I trust you today for today. You know that? We have a, we have a, a Savior who can relate with that, right? We have a Savior who knows that. We can be encouraged, too, by knowing nothing that we're going to face today, nothing that we're going to see happen, no, no season of lack, no time of desperation is going to be pointless or worthless or unknown by God. He knows it. He's going to use it. And it's going to be for his glory. That's, that can be encouragement to us. Hard, hard times make strong people. Easy times make soft people. We've had it easy for a long time as Americans, as Christians as let's see all white people like we've had it pretty easy in this country let's be honest hard times can make for strong people difficult times can make make us who we who we need to be and here's the thing life is going to be tough we need to be tough if we're going to if we're going to overcome if we're going to hang in there and make it through we need to be tough we need to be strong You know, when, when these hard times do come, a, a guarded heart is going to immediately look at Jesus. That's what, that's what a guarded heart will do. The righteousness of Christ wrapping our hearts is going to point us right to Jesus. God is suffering around looking to Jesus. Because he is he's our perfect example of, of overcoming difficulties in life. Think about it. Jesus faced seasons of lack all the time. He knows what you are going through. And he can relate with exactly what you're seeing right now, what you're experiencing right now. Jesus lived a life of lack. Like, yeah, he's God in the flesh. But think about it. He, he didn't have a home. He didn't, once he left his mom and dad's home, he didn't have a place to lay his head around. He didn't know where he was going that night. He didn't know where the next meal was coming from, necessarily. And then, when times really got hard, and, and, and his friends turned on him, 
Who was left? No. He was he was deserted. His friends ran with their tails between their legs and let, let it happen. If anybody can relate to, to seasons of lack, it's Jesus. Second Corinthians 6 10 says this. Our hearts ache, but we will always have joy. No matter what happens, our hearts will hurt, but we will have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. This is how Jesus lived. That was how Jesus lived. By no standard of, of human wealth or, or provision was he wealthy. He didn't have anything. But he was the richest man who ever walked on earth, and he gave it out. He gave it away, no matter where he went. He owned nothing, but yet he had everything. Jesus lived it this way, and Paul understood it. And, and we need to understand it as well. We find our hope, when we find hope in, in our stuff, in the world, people, places, and things, when we're looking to that stuff for hope, we're going to be in seasons of lack all the time. We're going to always be in seasons of lack, and we're waiting for people to meet our needs. We're waiting for our stuff to fill our needs. Right? We know that. There's nothing on this world that can fill the void in our heart. So why would we get upset when we lose those things? Why would we get upset if we're in a season of lack when we don't have what we think we need? They never would have fulfilled us anyways. So what do we have to lose? We can't look at suffering as a bad thing or a curse or a problem. Jesus told us over and over to not only expect it, but don't worry about it. Don't even think about it. Don't even concern yourself with the suffering that you will go through. This is our verse of the week right here. It's John 16, 33. And it says, I have told you, or I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Amen. That's what Jesus said. When you struggle, take peace, because I struggle. When you're hurting, have peace because I hurt. When things are difficult, have peace because they were difficult for me. Guys, we have this example in Christ who, who's done it all, seen it all, and lived through it all and overcome all of it. When we, when we choose to put our life in him, put our hope in him, we will overcome this world as well. We will overcome anything this world has to throw at us. We can have the same kind of experience Jesus had of victory, of a life of victory. So let's let's think about that. Let's change the way that we define lack or seasons of lack. Let's change the way we think about seasons of lack in our life. Lack is not determined by people, places, and things, right? People, places, and things don't determine the lack in our life. There's nothing in this physical world that can fulfill us. Therefore, there's nothing in the physical world that can destroy us. Stuff comes and stuff goes. Things come, things go. But our hope, our peace, our security in Christ, that's what fills our heart and that's what we need to stay out of guard for. That's what we need to keep protected. Those are the things this world cannot take away from us. As long as we keep our hearts guarded. We may suffer. We may struggle. This world may kick us straight in the face. What the Bible says is count on that. Plan on it. And when it happens, be encouraged. That's what the Bible says. When hard times come, when you are facing seasons of lack, when you get kicked in the face, rejoice. So that since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Your struggle is proof that you belong to him. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Anybody got a good amen for that? Amen. What we see now, this hard stuff now, will be nothing compared to the glory that we will experience with him in eternity. So here's the thing. Those in the world, apart from God, those who will die, will die apart from Christ, are going to suffer now, they're going to die, and they're going to suffer an, ever, an everlasting death in hell, right? That's what they got. So we might suffer a little now, but we suffer with hope, first of all. We face death, as well, but 
That's the death of our body. Our, our soul lives on forever and eternity in glory to God. Man, I'll take that deal any day. Because we're going to suffer either way. The, whole, the world is, is a fallen world. We're dealing with a fallen world who that doesn't have much to offer besides hardship, suffering, and difficulties. But with Christ, we can have hope. So let's be encouraged this morning. We are the church. We're, we're sons and daughters of the King. There's nothing that this world can throw at us that, that God doesn't know about, He isn't going to use for, for good, and that we're not going to forget about when we get home. So how do we live this out, princes and princesses? How do we live it out right now? First of all, we've, we view seasons of lack as gasoline for our, fire, for our faith flame. The harder life gets, the more desperate for God we get, right? The harder life is, the more we know we're, we're, we're in line for, for glory. If you don't ever have any hardships, I would be worried. Let's be honest. If you've never faced anything difficult in this life, I would be worried, according to the scripture we read today. Hardships prove that you're in the right path. The second thing is this. What the world needs to harm you, God will use for good. Just keep treading water. Just keep going. Just do not give up. Word from the brother this morning, Gary. Just don't give up. You know, that's 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 treading water. That's what that is. We're just we're just treading water. Yeah, my arms are getting tired. Yeah, my, my legs are tired. Yeah, my back hurts. Yeah, I've been treading water for a long time. Keep treading water. Don't give up now. Good things are coming. Good things are coming. And last, and this is gonna this is the end of the series. Keep your heart pure, healthy, and whole, and watch how the course of your life improves if you do. Amen? Church, we're going to need our hearts protected. We're going to, we're going to be coming into seasons, we're going to be coming into times where an unguarded heart will be destroyed. The only hope we have is to guard our hearts above all else. And I don't want us to be unaware when, when those opportunities all right, let's open this up. Who's got a thought coming out of this, this mini-series here? If there's any questions or any ideas. Anybody at all? All right, come on. I was going to give somebody else a try to speak before me. No. I don't know why I'm chatting Kathy today. <laughs> We all struggle in our own lives. We can't kid each other. Right. Um, and if we're not struggling, you know, we're not looking at the right place to unstruggle. Uh, we need to unstruggle, undo stuff in that book, Bible. That's where we can find all answers to all things. Um, and when you got brothers and sisters in Christ around you, don't be afraid to contact somebody. Right. Talk to them. I'm pretty sure, I mean, me and Ben are totally different people, but I'm sure he's been through the same struggles at some time that I've been through. Sure. Uh, I, and I don't know you that well. Right. But we're going to. Right. We're right. Gonna. Right. Love you, brother. Yeah. Uh, keep doing what you're right. doing. Appreciate you, man. You're helping me keep my faith. Amen. Amen. That's what we're doing here. Good. Yeah. Anybody else? Struggle is real. <laughs> That's the saying the world uses, but it's, it's a Christian. Struggle is real. Let's embrace it. Let's get bigger, better for it. You know. Hard times make hard people. We want to be, want to be strong. Anybody else? Well, I thought you were thinking about it. Pushing your, pushing your spiritual arm here. <laughs> so this is actually more towards Randy. Um, so since I decided to join. I've actually been drawn towards you. Um, the struggles you've been through in your life. I can't say that I've been anywhere here for you, but but you, as far as you've come in your spiritual life, keeps me striving to great mind. So you stay strong and you keep bringing people to God. So I want to say thank you to you as well. Amen. Hey, Appreciate sure. that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. 
And we don't realize how encouraging just walking it out is in our life for somebody else that's, that's on the outside looking in. Amen. We appreciate you sharing that. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, I said it before and I'll say it again. The four words. Jesus never gave up, and we should never give up either. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's, a, that's a word from the Lord this morning, because that's what was coming out of me, it's coming out of you. I think we need to pay attention to that. Yeah. You know. The enemy loves quitters. Right? He loves quitters. Yes, because you've given up on something that God put in your heart to do. What happens when you quit? You drown. But you keep treading water. You stop treading water, you keep treading water. You're going to drown. Amen. All right, we'll, we'll pray. We'll close it down this morning. All right, Lord, again, give us, give us thankful hearts this week. Lord, give us hearts that are, are so thankful that, that we can remember to guard our hearts. Lord, we can remember to protect what you put in us, this, this hope, this love, this mercy and grace that you can plant in our hearts. Lord. Let us remember to always protect it. Whether it's something on the screen that we're watching, something we're reading, something we're hearing, something we're saying, something we're putting in our body, or whatever it is. Lord, give us that Holy Spirit nudge in those moments to give us a way out. Lord, you, the Bible says you will, you will always give us a way out when temptation comes. Let us have that way out this week if, if we're tempted to let something mess up our hearts. Lord, we want to be strong people. We want to be a strong body of Christ, able to go and make a difference in this world and, and talk to people and love people and serve people. That's what this is about. We just ask you to give us the hearts to do those things. Uh, Lord, I just ask for, for every marriage in the room to be strengthened. I ask for every, every uh, relationship to be stronger. And Lord, we just ask that you to encourage each one of us to, to lean on the next person, to lean on somebody in the church. We don't have to battle with we don't have to fight over. We don't have to suffer. Lord, we're called to suffer as, as a body. The arm hurts, the whole arm, the whole body hurts. Lord, Lord, we just thank you for that. We praise your name. And we love you. We all said, Amen. Amen. Amen.